Welcome back to Reading the Bible Together. We're so glad you're joining us for this third week in Colossians. Uh, also the third week of Easter. Um, so we're going to just uh, remind you where we're at. We're, we're working our way through Colossians. Uh, and it is a letter that Paul wrote to a new church um, uh, who, that had started up. Um, he had never met the people there. He's just heard about their progress, about the birth of the church and, and how quickly they're growing. And he wants to make sure that they succeed. And so he's, he's writing them um, this letter um, with uh, kind of like a congratulations and some advice and some nurturing all, all ro rolled into one. Um, and so now we're going to uh, come to a sort of a, what is seen by a lot of people as kind of a strange uh, section of the letter. Uh, if, if there's nothing that's kind of caught you off guard by this point uh, in the letter, this section certainly will. Um, and so uh, it's going to, we're going to talk for a little bit about uh, suffering. And this section's a little difficult to interpret. Let's just take one little sample um, before we really dive in. Uh, verse, it's still in, in uh, chapter one here. No, chapter two, sorry. Uh, verse 24. I am now, re chapter one or two? It is chapter one. It is chapter Stay, one. Yeah. Sorry. We're going to start all over again, Joey. We're really sorry that we made you watch all that. Hope you got a good laugh out of it. We're just going to pause, begin all over again. <coughs> good? Good. Welcome back to Reading the Bible Together. We're so glad you're here with us for our third week of Easter and our third week in Colossians. Um, so just some reminders about the book of Colossians that we're working through. Um, Paul is writing to a new church. Uh, he is uh, writing to them despite the fact that he's never met uh, them um, because he's heard of how this, this new community has started. He wants to be sure they succeed. He wants to congratulate them, nurture them. Um, so we're going to dig in today to uh, the section on suffering. And so if nothing else has caught you off guard, um, as you've been reading through chapter one, uh, when you get to this, this section that talks about suffering, it's going to make you stop for a second. Um, and so let's let's look at it because uh, this can be a very difficult section to interpret. Let's let's uh, work on verse twenty four for a second. Uh, I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of His body, that is the church. Now this seems very counterintuitive to us. Maybe it shouldn't, but um, rejoicing in suffering doesn't mean that pain makes us happy uh, or that we should minimize or fail to acknowledge the pain and suffering of others. And we, we talked about that some last week and uh, that needs to continue to be um, something that, you know, that, that we cling to. Uh, Christianity has actually um, had a history of and should always, um, if we're really, you know, reading our Bible and interpreting it correctly, uh, you know, Christians should always um, be at the forefront of those who are going to comfort those who are suffering and in need. So um, we want to make sure that we understand that's not what we're talking about here. But um, there is also a long biblical tradition of suffering for the sake of others. So this is a sacrificial kind of suffering. So let's look first at the wider context of the verse itself. Um, and so let's talk about Paul's um, interest in the Colossians and um, his desire for their their success. Let's and let's keep that in mind as we read this um, the the verse that we just read and then the following verses again um, through to twenty nine. So it's verses twenty four to twenty nine. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of His body, that is the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known. The mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. 
To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil and struggle with all the energy that he powerfully inspires within me. So we're going to drill down into Paul's explanation, um, but let's let's just unpack the uh a couple of these ideas um so let's start with this idea of protection okay um because he he says i am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake well um you know paul paul has been through a lot of suffering but he's never met this church and um he's never as far as we know even been to Colossae at this point eventually um, we think he did, uh, you know, travel through the area at any rate. But um, so why, why would he be saying um, that he's suffering for their sake? Um, now, we, we do need to say that a lot of what we're going to say today is various, you know, there have been various debates through the years about what this passage means because it is one of the more difficult, um, would you say, the passages in Colossians. So there's, these are different layers of meaning and at the same time, you know, different theories. Um, and so, you know, this is, there might be some things in here that we find a little more challenging and others that we find a little bit more, we're a little more comfortable with. And that's fine. But, but here's one possible interpretation is that his suffering, um, the reason that he says, I am suffering for your sake is because, um, he is doing, he is seeing this as kind of, his suffering is kind of a, a protection of a lot of little baby churches while um, he draws attention away from those churches. Paul is deaf, you know, the, the Romans and the Jews are looking for someone to blame for everything that is going wrong. And Paul is definitely drawing uh, a crowd at this point, okay? And if we look, um, it's, it's kind of fun to go read Acts every now and then, um, and we've spent a good amount of time on the book of Acts here at um, reading the Bible together a couple of years ago. But go back through and read all of the all of the different twists and turns the the journey of Paul takes as he uh, stands up to authority in all these different Roman and Greek towns, and also in Jerusalem, and eventually, and he he gets arrested multiple times, and eventually um, works his way up the chain and appeals to Caesar, and so. Um, there's a lot of attention being drawn to Paul. And while that's happening, maybe local authorities aren't quite so aware of what's going on in little house churches in Colossae and Laodicea and Antioch and all these other places where these small groups are developing and growing and splitting off into bigger and, and bigger groups in multiple house churches and, um, and so he's, he's sort of drawing away their attention. So um, this, is, this is one of the, it, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to illustrate it like this. Okay, I was sitting on the porch the other day because um, it's, it's finally beautiful outside. It's been cold and now it's beautiful. And I was sitting on the porch and um, my husband has put a birdhouse kind of up uh, on one of the pillars of our porch and there's obviously a bird family there because there's lots of kind of pine straw sprouting out of it and so you know I was hearing the bird you know go back and forth and kind of you know it's been happening for a while so it's sort of I sort of had not really been paying attention to it for a while and then the other day I was sitting on the porch and the bird was just really loud and I was like, why is this bird so loud? And it was, it was sitting there and I was like, just go into your house. It's right there. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, drinking my drink and I'm reading my book. Why are you so loud? And I looked up and the bird was there and it was obviously, it was holding a feather. It was ready to go into its nest, but it was obviously very irritated about something. And it was just going on and on and on. And I looked down and I realized that my cat was sitting beside my foot and that the bird 
you know, that it had, the cat had wandered up and sat down and that I didn't notice the cat, but the bird did. And it was making a big ruckus. And the reason it was making a big ruckus is because it does not want to go in that birdhouse while the cat's there watching, you know? So he's, you know, this bird, he's protecting his little baby birds by making a big ruckus outside the house, a far away from where the baby birds are. And it's drawing my cat who actually had just eaten, so she didn't care. But honestly, she can be very dangerous to birds. Um, it's drawing the attention of my cat away from the baby birds and you know, just hopping around with this feather, um, making sure that the cat didn't have any idea where its house and the baby birds were. And so that's what, that's one of the ideas about what this passage is saying is that Paul is suffering but it's giving this chance, it's protecting this church and a lot of other baby churches, giving them a chance to grow while the Romans and the Jews are distracted and their attention is drawn to this, um, you know, firebrand who, you know, keeps challenging people and trying to convert Agrippa of all people um, <laughs> to Christianity and so on and so forth. You want to work on the next part? Yeah. Now, um... Uh, we're going to talk about the concept of an ambassador. Now, the word ambassador is not used here, but in verse 25, it says, I became its servant. That is a servant of the gospel. Mm -hmm. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given me. Now, uh, God says he has, uh, or Paul says he had, he's God's servant and he has a commission from God. So, as a king's representative, he, um, <coughs> as the king's representative, uh, a visit from Paul is a visit from the, from the king. Mm -hmm. And when the king's representative suffers, the king suffers. Mm -hmm. um, Jesus died and was raised. We were dead in our sin, and we were also raised. So somehow, in ways we probably can't, will never uh, totally understand, we continue to fill up uh, or complete the sufferings of Jesus. Um, and then he talks about a mystery, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. So Paul uh, wants us to know that his suffering, and indeed Christ's suffering, wasn't a last-minute solution or, or a last-ditch effort. In fact, in the, in the next chapter, he, he says, uh, I want... I want their hearts to be encouraged and united in love so that they may have all the riches of assured understanding and have the knowledge of God's mystery, that is Christ himself, in whom are hidden all the treasures and of wisdom and knowledge. So, um, likewise, his mission to the Gentiles is not plan B. He's not saying, well, things didn't work out so good with the Jews. Let's just, let's, uh, let's, here's plan B, okay? I, I, I didn't, I thought this would work and it didn't, so now I'm going to do this other thing. Uh, no, there was always this mission to the Gentiles and suffering was always going to be a part of it and evil was always going to be defeated in the end. So let's read uh, 25 through 27 one more time. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known. It's interesting. He's saying God's commissioned me, you know, for you before they've even met, right? But, you know, that, that lines up with Paul's experience because all, all sorts of things have happened where God has lined up people that he hasn't met before. Um, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations but now has been revealed to his saints, to them... God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. When Paul says the mystery is hidden throughout the ages, we should know that we could find bits of it in the Old Testament. So let's go look at some bits of it in the Old yes, Testament. Yes, uh, as, as we've already said, this wasn't a, there was no plan B. This is the plan. This is the plan. Being worked out uh, mm -hmm. over the centuries. And when God called Abraham back in Genesis 12, he says, among other things, uh, in you, all the families of the earth uh, shall be blessed. So this is for everybody. Uh, it's offered to everyone. 
uh, regardless of any of the things that we use to divide people into various mm -hmm. uh, categories or classes or r races or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, and, and, the, and, the, and the Messiah does in fact uh, defeat evil. And this is predicted, believe it or not, clear back in Genesis 3.15 mm -hmm. in the garden after the snake has come in and then tempted Eve and Adam and the whole thing has fallen apart there. Uh, when God is talking to the snake, he says, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers, and he will strike your head and you will strike his heel. The offspring of the woman mm -hmm. is going to strike the head of of the serpent, and the serpent is going to bite the heel of the offspring of the woman. And that's, uh, if you see how it's played out over the, throughout the Bible into the New Testament, that has to be talking about Jesus, and the striking of the heel is the suffering, mm -hmm. as a picture of the suffering. Uh, the secret uh, plan from the beginning includes suffering. And we're, we're going to read this uh, famous chapter from Isaiah about Jesus' suffering, Isaiah 53. Mm -hmm. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom... Others hid their faces. He was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. So, what does this mean for us? Uh, when we encounter suffering, um, we need to remember all of this. We need to remember all of the pieces that Paul sees falling into place, not only in the suffering of Christ, but in his own suffering. Um, we tend to see suffering as a sign that God is, isn't in control or, um, you know, that... that you know, we, we, it, it makes us maybe doubt uh, God's, God's care or, or God's plan. And instead, Paul sees it as part of the grand plan. Suffering is part of the plan. Um, and again, we, we need to be very careful not to underline, uh, undermine the suffering of others or refuse to handle our own feelings and our pain. But we look for places where Christ has stepped in to suffer alongside us. And we also need to note carefully what Paul says about maturity. Um, if we are part of the kingdom in Christ, we should be growing to maturity and looking for ways to help others to do so. And, and this, is, um, this is in verses 28 through 29, it says, it is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil and struggle with all the energy that he inspires in me. So Paul knows that it's not in our own strength that we're going to accomplish this maturity, that we're going to endure suffering. That is all going to happen through the power that is it the power that inspire he inspires within me the power of the holy spirit that's um we we need to rely on god uh to help us through the struggles and to give us the energy to help others to grow to maturity we hope you'll join us again next week <laughs>